Now, to start off with, we need to know just a little bit about electric fields. So charged particles, like electrons or protons or that sort of thing, have little electric fields around them. Just like a magnet has a magnetic field around it that lets it do things like pick up paper clips. We can see this in, for example, static electricity. If you rub a plastic rod against your hair and then hold it near little pieces of tissue paper, the tissue papers will jump onto the rod. Now in 1831, this fellow here, Michael Faraday, figured out that electricity and magnetism are almost the same thing. So they're very, very closely related indeed. And this led him to develop a theory of electromagnetism. So what does this mean? We can figure out that a changing electric field will produce a changing magnetic field. So it means that if you run an electrical wire in just the right way, you can make it behave like a magnet. And the other thing is that a changing magnetic field will create an electric field. That means that by taking, for example, a permanent magnet and spinning it around or moving it quickly, you can create an electric current. And in fact, this is the basis of all electricity generation these days. But it turns out that a changing electric field will, that creates a changing magnetic field will also have that changing magnetic field create a new electric field. And that new electric field will create a new magnetic field and so on. And this whole series of electric fields and magnetic fields will propagate outward very, very, very quickly in a wave. And this is what we call an electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic is such a long word that most of the time I'll abbreviate it on the slide here to EM. So surely if these electromagnetic waves exist, we'd be able to see them in nature, right? We'd be able to make an instrument that could detect those waves and say, oh look, there's one. Well, it turns out that we don't really need to do that because there's already a type of electromagnetic wave that we can see with our own eyes. And that is light. One of the amazing discoveries of the 19th century was that light was in fact a phenomenon of electric and magnetic fields, a form of a wave that was propagating along very, very quickly indeed. But it turns out that light is not the only type of electromagnetic wave. Is it possible to generate electricity using a magnet? So I mentioned near the start of the slideshow a little bit about electromagnetism. All you need to know is that yes, it is possible. So we can use a magnet to generate electricity. So it turns out that electricity and magnetism are related so that a changing magnetic field or an alternating magnetic field that's alternately going north, south, north, south, as in a spinning magnet, will in fact create an electric current that goes positive, negative, positive, negative. So it means that instead of getting an electric current going around in one direction, we'll get it moving back and forth. And in fact, this is how generators produce electricity today. The mains power is alternating back and forth at 50 hertz because the magnet that produces the current is spinning at 50 times a second. A similar question. Is it possible to generate a magnetic field using electricity? And as I'm sure you've guessed, the answer, once again, is yes, it is possible. For now though, I'll just give you a brief explanation. It turns out that a current that is moving in a circle, so in, for example, loops of wire or a coil of wire that's been twisted around a piece of metal like a nail, then it will produce a magnetic field like a magnet. So what this means is that if we take a wire and we wrap it in very tight coils around for example a nail and then turn the power on through that coil that nail will turn into a magnet as long as we have the power on and so as you might have recognized this is an electromagnet as it turns out the more current we run through that wire the stronger the magnet will be so we can use loops of wire to create very strong magnets indeed 